This coming week for Halo is going to be a pretty big week with a new update for MCC, some flighting process starting on Thursday, as well as a new Halo Infinite development update. You want to know everything going on with that? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So the news side of things right now with Halo as a whole, it's been kind of quiet. Though it's going to be really busy towards the end of this week as we have some flighting processes going on with the custom game browser for MCC, some new updates going in with MCC as well, on top of the PC development update for Halo Infinite. So in this video, I'm going to give you everything you should know and get yourself ready for for this week. So if you guys like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, well make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. The way we'll progress through the news is we're gonna go through everything that's gonna happen sooner and then finish off with the stuff that's gonna finish off later in this week. So first of all, so obviously we're gonna get the Wednesday playlist update for the MCC. That's gonna be coming with new challenges as well, as well as an update to the exchange. Odd thing about the exchange this week is that it's showing the Rhine sniper rifle and the bloody damaged version of Romeo, but it's not a third item. We've always had three items so far since the release of the the exchange so maybe something might be coming in later that we just don't know about highly possible that's going to be updating on wednesday at 10 a.m pacific standard time and along with that we'll get some new challenges coming in for the mcc the for you to earn some more seasonal points to grind your way through the 100 tiers of season six Remember that the unmasked or unhelmeted version of the damaged Romeo skin for your ODST players is only going to be available within the exchange because the challenges that were tied to it were only tied for that season. You can't unlock it anymore. So this is really your only chance to get Romeo in your ODST gameplay. So I suggest you guys go in and pick that up as well as the Ryan sniper rifle skin as it's only available within the exchange as well. So definitely want to go check that out. This is the first time we've seen some recycled content come in to the uh, exchange. So this might be the kind of cadence that we'll see about every three weeks. We might see the same items come back around for that season. This next section, we are actually going to be talking about the flighting process for the custom game browser. That's finally going to happen this Thursday. At least that's what's currently planned right now as stated in the recent development update for MCC stating as early as next Thursday we are working to get a scale test underway for custom game browser in Master Chief Collection for Halo Reach. If all goes well it will kick off then and run until the following Monday. The custom game browser is one of the most highly anticipated features to come into the MCC and it's gonna be awesome for us to get a chance to play around with it finally. We actually did get some screenshots on how this custom game browser will be looking in the MCC. And here you can see what it looks like within the multiplayer screen. You'll have a little addition of custom game browser added in right there. And if you click on that, you'll see an option to browse or create. And if you click on browse, this is what you'll be seeing. It's kind of like a server browser, basically you normally expect with your PC games. But now it's gonna be within the console and PC for the MCC, which is gonna be freaking awesome. And it's gonna be a great way to find your game modes that you wanna play. So the title of it, the game type, the map that you're playing on, the number of players, and the pings as well for these servers. So if you click on one of those servers, this is what the session details will look like. You get to see a name of like what kind of things they're playing as. Uh, again, the server location, if the repeat game feature was on, if you're able to change teams within the game, uh, the different game variants and things like that, the different maps over here as well. And you just click join and it just throws you into the game. It'd be great. And stated previously, it's only going to be available for Halo Reach. That is because Halo Reach probably has the most features for custom games in the MCC right now. And basically what they want to do is start small and branch it out to something larger. Because if you make one little change with the custom game browser, with all the games that included, you got to make that same accommodation for all the other games, most likely. And so, yeah, that could be a big of a pain. So what 343 wants to do is start small and make sure that the game flow is, works properly getting in and out of servers, as well as it being content rich and also feature rich enough for the community to enjoy it. And this is what the create match screen looks like, but it's really more like creating a server in a way. You can put the name on it, the minimum amount of players, the max players, the regions, the repeat game feature, as well as team changing. And now you also add in your different variants. You can have up to three different variants. As stated right here, saying in phase one, players can create game sessions in Halo Reach that include up to three custom game variants 
Each custom game variant includes a single game variant up to six map variants. And that's kind of an odd wording, but basically it sounds like you'll have your three different kind of game modes you can choose and you have up to six maps per variant is what it sounds like. Because with the MCC's version of the custom game browser, you're not just setting up like a single game like you can with Halo 5. You're setting up more of a server to jump in and play with friends that I believe there's just a kind of a continuational kind of thing that happens with it as well. So you don't have to like back out. I mean, you can back out if you want, reset the lobbies and do everything else that you would like, like you normally would with like Halo 5. But with the MCC server browser, it's more like setting up your own personal server, which is all on dedicated servers. So you can choose your game modes, your map variants, and all that stuff, and just hit play, and it just kind of keeps going, which is going to be great. So honestly, like the custom game browser, it sounds like it's going to function a lot better than Halo 5's. The only issue is that they really need to work out is getting in and out of matches. With Halo 5's custom game browser, it can be really laggy and a pretty much a mess when it comes to trying to get in and out of servers. For whatever reason, you can sit there for like two minutes straight with a frozen screen. Hopefully that doesn't happen with this. I don't expect it to, but we'll see once Thursday rolls around and we get our chance to play this. Speaking of Thursday, will be the last Thursday of April. So the last Thursday of every month, we've been getting a new Halo Infinite development update. This time it's gonna be around the PC development. I'm gonna be very interested in this development update because I'm a PC player. I've been playing MCC on PC since it's been on PC pretty much. I've pretty much been a PC player since 2012 when I started playing Battlefield 3. And so it's gonna be really great to see what 343 has done to make sure that Infinite's launch on PC PC is going to be where it needs to be essentially. This is the first PC version of a Halo game that's going to be available at launch along with the console. So this is going to be a monumental release. So the main thing I'm really looking forward to when it comes to this development update is seeing if there what kind of new features they're going to be able to have with it. They have taken advantage of some of the new Nvidia features like DLSS, which basically allows you to get more frames for the same quality of graphic because they do some kind of pixel simulation. It's a lot of technical science, but basically your game looks just as good and you get more frames, which is kind of crazy. I believe AMD has some similar features as well. I would like to see some good discussion about their support for AMD features as well as Nvidia features for graphics. We may even get a good idea of what the minimum specs, recommended specs, and also high-end specs for PC builds for Halo Infinite, which would be awesome to hear. So I do feel like getting recommended specs might be a bit of a stretch, but I think we could get a general idea of what to expect when what is needed hardware-wise when it comes to playing on PC, because everyone wants to know, can my system run it? And a lot of times, yes, Sometimes though. I also want to really hear them address the issue which really came up with MCC when it came to utilizing different input devices since it's going to be a crossplay game between console and PC and also with MCC's release on the PC the issue of aim assist and bullet magnetism really became a thing when it comes to Halo. I've tried, I mean I've tried to get playing on mouse and keyboard for MCC down and it just doesn't work as well as controller. I don't know if that's just an like inherent abilities of MCC where all those games were specifically designed for controller in mind and only really to be on console. And this is the first Halo game we've had developed alongside console and PC at the exact same time. So I really want to see how they address this in any way where they can make it feel like playing on mouse and keyboard and playing on controller is at least even enough and not a huge advantage like we've been seeing with the controller play on MCC. When it comes to that kind of discussion, I would really like to hear from the pro team that's at 343 to discuss some of these kind of detailed topics. Because when you're just kind of casually playing MCC, you can play on mouse and keyboard and honestly you could do fine. But if you're going for like higher end gameplay, like saying you're trying to go for your top 200s or whatever in a playlist, that's where you really start seeing the controller versus mouse and keyboard, so I'd really like to see that addressed. Though, since this game is going to be free to play, I also want to see a lot of accessibility when it comes to graphical hardware for Halo Infinite as well, because yes, I want this game to look amazing, but I also want this game to be very accessible to a lot of people on PC since it's going to be free to play. Most of the games that are free to play and they're kind of designed to be accessible for your average audience, you need to be, have some kind of ability to dumb down those graphics a bit to where a lower end PC or laptop will be able to run the game at 60 frames just fine. I believe having the ability to modify the graphics enough to where lower end PCs and laptops would be able to run the game would be a huge boost of population for Halo Infinite because it'd just be more available to more people to get a chance to play with it being free to play. I mean, people are gonna have to download just to give it a chance and if they enjoy it, they'll stick with it. But if their PC can't run it, 
then it's really kind of negligible to them. I came across this issue, especially with like Battlefield 1. That's when my old PC setup used to, was really struggling actually, though maintain 60 frames at 1080p for that game. And I just didn't really end up playing it a whole lot because my system was just so terrible with it. Now you refuse to play any Battlefield games on console because I feel so sluggish and terrible. So I'd really hope to avoid those kind of situations with Infinite on the PC side of things. Now I don't know if this really does involve the PC directly. I mean, obviously it'd be done on PC, but modding support as well. This game will be on Steam. And if there's like a Steam workshop where you can post your different kind of bits of content you can download for the game, like mods or any kind of visual upgrades or anything like that, I would love to see that support as well brought up in this development update. And lastly, a big feature I really want to see talked about within this development update is RTX. If you guys don't know what that is, essentially it's a way of your graphics card to interpret lighting just better, honestly. With RTX on, your graphics look incredibly better. Before the announcement of the delay, the actual feature of RTX, which is gonna be part of the Xbox Series S and X features, was not gonna be there at launch. And then now the game has been delayed, so I highly suspect RTX to be announced to be at launch for Halo Infinite. Now, if that's the case, I would love to see some awesome new screenshots of the environments and different situations and scenarios, which, I'm pretty sure we'll get some new in-game screenshots when it comes to Halo Infinite, when it comes to the PC side of things, because they probably have some beastly god-tier PCs there at 343, where they can really crank up the graphics and the visual fidelity, get you some really great looking screenshots so we can finally put in thumbnails and share around online. And as soon as that update goes live, I guarantee you'll have a video on this channel talking about that. So if you guys like these kind of informational videos or be on the loop for Halo for the last few days or so, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.